Hey y'all, it's Sin and I'm back to do another review. And this one is for 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. And it's for season four, episode 10. Uh, or what I'm calling the pop up and pop out episode. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> Right, we're gonna start with David and Lana popping up at Lana house. So last time we ended with him getting upset because she ain't see him crying, leaving his flowers in the freaking restaurant, and now he wanna pop up at her house, which I was like, bad idea. She gonna call the police on him and be like, what are you even doing here? He get there, some old man there, and he like, um, no, I don't know nobody lives there. I live here since '95, and no one that even looks like that lives here or has ever lived here. You know, David destroy. He, he, I just don't understand. She must. Did she give me the wrong address? Yeah, David, she gave you the wrong address. Yeah, that's very obvious. Um, and that's why you should never even popped up in the Ukraine and popped up at house. Bad idea. Oh my gosh, this man is like so ridiculous. He needs to just let it go. It's 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 done. What are you doing? And then he's like, I don't know what she's doing. I just don't understand what she's doing. Playing you, David. She playing you. That's she do. You over here paying to chat with her. Um, and she's running you for that money. That's what she's doing. Come on. Uh, and then besides that, he's just like, I really want to say, I really want to say, this is it. This is the end. I'm never going to do this again. But I know that if she just messages me, I'm just going to fall right back in it. And like I said last time, crumbs. He accepts nothing. Uh, his standards are in the ground is that how, how low can we go the bottom of the ocean shoot that's where his his freaking standards are they're all the way down there she needs to have a little message and she's going right back in his life getting that money and he ain't never gonna see her though so foolishness that's really it with david but that's popping it up number one <sighs> popping up number two who i don't even want to discuss i'm mad they're still on an episode nobody can want them on here anymore freaking Darcy and Tom they freaking showed them and I'm just like I really thought finally we'll be done with them but no and of course what happens Tom is trying to pop up on Darcy at her house oh I just want to say an apology to Darcy I wrote in the letter here's my feelings this is him okay but why couldn't you just say that to her face he get there and Darcy's like all right I don't want to talk to you well this is what I really think Darcy was like, all right, he coming back. He want to be with me. So I feel like she had a little bit of hope. And then when he was just like, I felt bad about the way things went. Um, you know, he still was in love with that girl that he's with. And then she's like, oh, no, no, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. You need to go. And she's just adoring him. But he's just like, this is ridiculous. I don't understand why she wouldn't take my letter expressing myself. Why would she take your little feelings letter and you can't even tell how you felt properly at y'all first dinner or even at her house when you face to face shit slam the door on you and nothing happened T take your feelings and keep them to yourself tom no he gonna put his little pocketed feelings right on her little freaking car windshield and he gonna leave tom is so annoying both of them are annoying they're they just want the attention they just want to be on tv and they are doing anything to drag this story out he want to draw to connecticut they'll pop up on people like i just don't have time for it i'm done with them i really am all right <laughs> <laughs> so those are the two pop-ups. Then there's the pop-out. Now, the pop-out is Ash. Listen, Ash and Avery's whole section of this episode was my favorite. Uh, and because, I don't know, some of these episodes, like last episode, episode 9, even this episode, there are parts that are like, kind of boring. Like they're just dragging and they're boring me. But I have to say I was very entertained by Ash and Avery. So we're with Ash and Avery and they're about to go to one of Ash's seminars. He says he does them sometimes for the cash. He said he gives more money than he do in one-on-one -on -one sessions and he gets to see more people. All right. Right, whatever. They go, and Avery, you know, she always is like, single women, single women. He's always around single women. I swear she says single women like a hundred times. Either that, or, you know, production just replaying her clips over and over. Either way, I'm tired of hearing her say single women. But whatever. She's like, I'm going to find out the truth. How does he act around them? Is he really acting this way? Like, I'm going to find things out, and if I don't like it, I'm leaving. I don't believe her, though. I feel like Ash can act anyway, and Avery talks a good game, but Avery not going nowhere. I don't even believe her. Right. But we're getting to the pop-out, right? That's what we're getting to. 
So they go to the seminar and Ash starts talking and he is a horrible, I'm a relationship coach. No, you're an idiot is what you are. <laughs> you're actually an idiot and you know no information and none of your information is based in actual uh, knowledge or research. It's very obvious. So he's like, yeah, men and women and women only like, you know, they, they have a lot going on in their brain. They're crazy. Oh, right, Ash. So we crazy? Like, he just used every stereotypical thing to describe a man and a woman. It was ridiculous. Women are crazy. Women are emotional. Women has all these interconnected things in their head. And men have little boxes where they think of nothing. I mean, he also stereotyped men in a way where I'm pretty sure they don't want to hear that either. Yep. We are not complex. All of our boxes are separate. This is for men, he's saying. Uh, and they're dumb and they think about nothing a lot. What, Ash? And men are masculine and take charge and women are emotional. Literally, he said emotional. Like, come on. The woman in there is looking like, wait, what? You're trying to say this? You're trying to say that? And he's just like, uh, uh, um, what I was trying to say, um, uh, so men and their masculine injury... I, all of my thoughts are getting confused in my head. I got a lot going on. But wait a minute, Ash. Pause. I thought you said men had boxes that were separate. Nothing gets crazy and everything is, you know, straight line. You can think straight and make decisions. But when you get in a room full of women who are questioning everything you're saying, apparently now all these boxes in your head are interlocking and you can't even think properly. So then this fool, he's like, I have to take a break. He's going to pop out of his goddamn seminar. How you leading a seminar and pop out of it? Y'all. This was great. Oh my god, this was so good. He pops out. They, the women in there, like giggling and laughing at him. They like, this man is ridiculous. He don't know what he's talking about. And then he comes back, and it still, it still does not get better. Men back in the days always worried about money and putting food on the table, and women were worrying about cooking and cleaning. Ash. This cannot be how his one-on-one -on -one sessions are going. Like, this is what he's telling people. I don't know if in a crowd and with Avery there, he had to come up with more things than he usually does. Or, like, maybe he just talks to these women one-on-one -on -one and says weird things like this. But this man is out of his mind. The last thing he said, like, this was, like, ridiculous. And these backwards, old-time gender roles and ways that people think that women and men act. He's like... Yeah, so everyone has their love languages and women have to sit there and figure out the man's love language so they can figure out how, to, you know, he wants to be loved and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, wait, so it's our job. We shouldn't express our love language to be loved, but we should be figuring out his like he a child. So I'm like, yeah, because men don't really know and understand. No, women aren't somebody's dang mother. He ain't no gay child, you know, he's sifting through, trying to figure out how to fix a man. He's not a relationship coach. He's a let's baby men and you can figure everything out for them, but also they're masculine and dominating and they're going to bring home the bread. Like, what? They're going to bring on a bread, but also just be one-track-minded and dumb. That's what he basically said. And women are going to be emotional and crazy and find out what their man wants and find out how they need to be loved. And everything's going to be great. Ash, nobody's relationship is going to work with this coaching. It's terrible. But I also think when he does one-on-one, -on -one, he does so much flirting that it doesn't matter what he says because he ends up on dates with these people. Y'all, this is definitely what's happening. But that was the pop-out. He had to pop out of his own cinema, sem seminar. Seminar. That's a tongue twister. He had to pop out of his own seminar because he was looking foolish. He couldn't even keep it together with his own words because he knew what he was saying didn't make no sense. <sighs> that. That was great. So, Avery's like, what? This is how he think? I can't believe he think like this. And if he do, I don't think I want to be with somebody like that. So, they out after this and they walking in the street and she like so that's how you act you get aggressive when people ask you questions and when some when those women there were being combative and going back and forth to him like wait masculine energy feminine energy like men don't have to only have masculine energy and women don't have to only have feminine energy and we don't have to balance we don't have to be opposites and balance it out he's just like no no he's just trying to tell people like so like he thinks he's an actual expert Delusions, delusions. Uh, and he's he, he gets so mad at Avery when she brings him the truth. He gets so upset. And then he just storms off. And this is what I'm gonna say it's funny. He's all this masculine energy and feminine energy so much, right? And then men are this way and they're assertive and they're dominating. But 
Avery dominated that conversation. She dominated it so much that he had to walk away. So clearly proving this whole masculine, feminine, dominance doesn't even make any freaking sense. Because actually he would be the more docile person in the relationship because he walked out. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like, you don't make any sense. No, you don't. <laughs> um, Avery's basically like, I don't like this, but I know she's gonna stay with him. So that is really with them. But those are the pop ups and the pop, the pop ups and the pop outs. That's what's the pop ups and the pop ups episode. But <clears throat> let's get on to the rest of these people. All right, now I am on to Ed and Rose. Uh, they actually also were entertaining this episode, so anytime I see it, because he's just a hot mess, it's usually entertaining. So, this is coming from Ed wanting to take Rose Marie on a vacation away from her home, because he hates it there, and he was sitting there, you know, on the wall looking crazy as he was laying. He don't want to be there, so they go on a vacation to separate part of the Philippines. And they get to the hotel and creepy Ed being creepy as usual with a little old self, way older than Rosemary. It's like, oh, I got gifts for you. He got a bikini for her. I'm like, all right, whatever. Maybe they're going to go swimming. She got a bikini. All good. Then he going to pull out some little skimpy lingerie. Yeah, it's a present for you. No, it's a present for you, Ed, little creep. You want to see this freaking woman who's 20, 30? I can't even remember how many years older he is than her. And some little lingerie. And Rose is like... You know, her little typical lip up face. You're like, what is that? <laughs> and she's not thrilled. That's definitely the truth. But what he does also give her, he's like, oh, I also bought you mouthwash, a toothpaste, and a toothbrush. Because, you know, your breath isn't pretty. You little rude piece of trash. Where, how are you going to be talking about her breath not pretty? First of all, listen. If somebody got a breath problem and they're going out with them and they want to explain it to them, that... Like, you're going to have to probably have that hard conversation. But what was at the base, he didn't even have to do that on TV. Because it's mad embarrassing in front of the crew, in front of the freaking whole world who's going to have to see it. It was mad rude. So, of course, Rosemary's just sitting there looking at him like... She's like, I don't have bad breath because I got ulcers on my stomach. And now he's just sitting there looking stupid. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't... I didn't know. I didn't know. Like... Yeah, because maybe you should be thinking about what you're going to do on TV or like in front of a whole bunch of people. It's mad rude. Um... And so Rosemary is so mad. She walked, she walked away to the bathroom and he's like, I love you. And in her language, she's like, you ugly. <laughs> that was great. Um, diving into he ugly, like not even that I'm trying to say he ugly or anything, but y'all, that hair is atrocious. Anytime he don't have his hair up in that little bun ponytail thing, it looks crazy. It's just hanging. It just looks terrible. He needs to cut it off. Or always keep it up. That is it. He don't even do nothing else with it. So, besides that, they hanging out. You know, they go to see these monkeys. And Ed is like, this is a good idea. I'm going to do this because Rose is mad at me because that's how breath thinks. And then he terrified the monkey. He's like, oh, no. They're looking at us. They're looking at me. Oh, my gosh. This was great. The monkey was just yelling. I was hoping he got attacked. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it would have been funny. Um, But... Monkeys was cute, Ed was terrified, and it was great to see. Besides that, they go to dinner, and Ed is just like, yeah, I'm just trying to see if you're the one I want to love. Well, the one I want to marry, he basically says. Like, he's insinuating that. And Rose is like, all right, yeah, am I that person? She, he's like, yeah, I want somebody loving and caring. I want to never leave me. Uh, and she's like, okay, you think that's me? And he like, I don't know. Because, dun dun dun. Remember when his her sister sent that text to Ed saying, oh, I need money. Um, but don't say, don't tell Rose I did this. Which I said, I think that Rose was in on it. Whatever, wasn't for that money. Um, but she sits at the table quietly and she's just like, no, I didn't know about that when Ed brings it up. And reduction is so, they so shady. Why they zoom in on um, Rose's leg and her leg bumping up and down and bumping up and down? Because I'm pretty sure she did know this happened. Um, but y'all shady reduction. Leave Rose alone. Let her get her money. Don't be zooming in on her leg. Trying to show that she was nervous. <laughs> Leave her alone. Let her make her money. All right? And after that, Ed is like, okay, I believe Rose. She says she didn't know. So she didn't know. And that is what happened with them. Uh, he, but he wants to confront Rose's sister with Rose about the homeless situation. Which I just feel like this is going to be messy. Really, is that, 
I just don't see it going to go well. Unless it's to see Mad Stern and Bout It. So I don't know. We'll see. Right? We'll see. All right. Next people is Yolanda and Williams. And like I have said countless times recently, um, annoying. I'm just annoyed with this whole storyline. Like, okay, either she really is. No, she's not really in denial. Let me. <laughs> I don't even believe that. So either she is just trying to convince herself because she knows the truth, but she just keeps saying it's something else so she doesn't look bad, right? It's either that or she really does know he's a catfish. She just wants to stay on TV. I'm between the two of them now because I don't know. I should see her face and I don't be believing her no more. I'm like Yolanda, no one, no one is that naive. Nobody. I don't know though. Sometimes people really do be. Dang, I'm just unconvincing myself. Whatever. I'm going to say she really know the truth. Is she playing herself? Is she just trying to really convince herself on her head so she don't look stupid? Or she know and she just wants to stay on TV because she already started filming the show and she might as well just keep it going. Um, but, you know, it's not much happening with her. She just talking to her children. She's like, oh, our, me and William's relationship has been so um, stressful ever since his Instagram deleted. Your relationship hasn't been stressful, Yolanda. It's been non-existent. Because ever since his Instagram deleted, you haven't talked to him. You haven't talked to him in like a week. Um, besides the fact that he posed to someone else and emailed you and said he wanted to, you know, extort you for money. Uh, but you said that was a hacker. Okay. Uh, and then she tells her children, like, oh, yeah, and some woman contacted me and it's Williams' friend. Some woman that she's never talked to her before in her life contacted and supposedly that's his friend. And he says, Williams misses you, but he lost all of his data and his stuff got hacked. And she's like, see, I was right. He was hacked. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, Yolanda, all right, can we stop? He wasn't hacked. This is him talking to you. He missed you so much. Why he hasn't contacted you? None of this makes any sense. And her children are just like, uh, ma get it together so that's really it with her though i just want her to stop being annoying and let it go williams isn't real and i don't have time for it okay i really don't y'all they threw everybody in this episode and maybe that's also why like it may seem like okay that makes it really interesting but they threw everyone in and it made parts of it boring because everyone doesn't need to be in there because all of their storylines aren't really that interesting because nothing's really happening or they're just dragging it out but next people are Usman and Lisa and they're still trying to get quote unquote mommy's blessings uh so that they can get married right oh, gosh Lisa is continuing to call Usman's mother mommy I still want to knock her out I still hate her right so they go see his mother again, and they just ask for the blessing. They're practically begging, and his mother just such a G. She's sitting there looking, doing a little side eye. I love that little side eye she be giving. His mother's giving the side eye, and eventually they freaking weigh down on her, and I'm like, don't give the blessings. Don't give the blessings that she does. Ugh. She gives a blessing so they can get married. Um, but Usman, like, really tries to make a case for himself. He's like, I just, I'm going to go to America. I'll have a better life. And then he, he says all of that. And he says, and she really loves me. He never yet, like, he never once mentions that he really loves her. So we already know it's the truth anyway. But I find it hilarious. She's like, she really loves me. And I want to go to America because it could be great. <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad at Usman for wanting to do what he want to do. I'm just mad at me go down with this crazy lady. She's annoying. My gosh. Besides that, they get into this whole fight because Usman's like, you're controlling. And before we get married, we need to discuss some things. And Lisa's like, okay, what? It's like a day before we're about to get married. You just trying to bring this up right now? And Usman is like, yeah, uh, I don't like you controlling. And I'm going to be the man of the house. And I'm going to lay down the law. And I'm going to tell you what to do. And you can't tell me nothing. You may give your advice, but you ain't telling me nothing. <laughs> she, of course, was upset. All right, listen. There's no one ruler in a relationship. I don't believe in that. That don't make no sense. But what I find hilarious is that Usman's like, you you can't be telling me stuff like you go in the house right now. That's not how you talk to people. He's like, I'll tell you go in the house right now. She's like, excuse me? How do you say one thing to him, but you'll be mad if he say it back to you? What? You can't yell go in the house to him, but he can't yell it back at you. That actually makes no sense. Um, but this is, this is not going to work if they're not going to compromise, which I don't care. But I just find it hilarious. She's like, oh, he's not going to have no docile woman. I don't know, cat or a dog. And you're not going to tell me these type of things. Um, so she walks away. She's like, F you. And she walks off. And he's just like, 
we're gonna have to figure this out. I had mentioned that before that he did not like how she acts. Like, Lisa is not gonna change the way she acts, so uh, they just gonna be in there arguing. That's what's gonna be happening. And um, a woman's place isn't underneath her husband, even though it's actually not crazy for you to say, oh, you can advise me. Both people in a marriage should advise each other and they should seek advice from each other and they should talk about things and then make a decision. No one should be telling anyone what to do, right? That would be simple to solve this all. So, will they stay together? Or will she leave and go back to America? We'll find out. No, I really do hope this thing they actually don't stay together. <laughs> Cause that's annoying. And I don't wanna see her, even though everyone is up on this freaking season and I don't wanna see and they should be disappearing. Somehow they still in the episode. So no matter what happens, she go back to America, they don't stay together, they figure it out, they probably gonna figure it out. Um, I'm still gonna see her sign to just give up and not even be thinking about that. So next is Stephanie and Erica and they're back talking after the whole like argument thing they had, the party, and Erica's like, yeah, let's go on a walk, Stephanie. And Stephanie's like, oh my God, I think she's gonna yell at me. So then Stephanie basically apologized to everything. I didn't know I was acting like that and blah, blah, blah. Love me, don't leave me. I love you, Erica. They make up. Erica's like, okay, we can start a clean slate because Stephanie brings up, let's start off clean. All right, let's start off clean. Beep, beep. Then oblivion of idiocy because they notice it's not gonna work. And they spend the rest of the episode like, oh yay, let's throw a boomerang. We're having a great time. Let's go on a boat trip. Yay, yay, yay. And then it's all just gonna go bad because we already know they're not good together um besides that the only one little tiff that popped up not even really a tiff um erica and stephanie took a picture when they on a little boat ride and erica's like oh you gonna send it to your mother and stephanie's like no because you know she hasn't come out yet nor has erica but erica's like look we're together we're trying to work this out i'm gonna come out to my parents um and i don't want to fully be a secret so we'll see how that goes um I think they both haven't come out. So it, it is weird for her to even try to pressure somebody because somebody has to come out on their own time. I can understand how I want to be a secret, but then y'all, maybe you shouldn't date somebody that wasn't out. You weren't out either. Um, so I don't think you should pressure her, especially because she should understand what it feels like when they both are in to their parents. So I don't know, kind of strange. But what I say is this little bliss, we're happy, yeah, yeah. This is not gonna last, I don't see it. I don't see it lasting because they're, they're just weird. Oh, Stephanie does admit, she's like, I make myself seem so perfect online, but I'm really not like that. And I have a lot of insecurities and all this other stuff. Okay, but that's why you don't have to seem perfect online. Who cares? Nobody's perfect. And that's why you don't need to put that persona out there and pretend to be something that you're not. And then when people meet you, then they'd be surprised. Like, okay, who are you? Also, you may pretend to be perfect online, but if you were talking to Erica on the phone and FaceTime and all that, there was no need to pretend to be perfect because I was supposed to be your girlfriend. You know, be yourself. Maybe this will solve a lot of issues. And Erica's like, um, yeah, like the things that Stephanie has insecurities with, she knew this all before she came to Australia. And that's why I say, she has all these insecurities. I just don't see it working out. I don't. It's just, mm-mm, mm-mm. This little bliss just ain't gonna last, y'all. Lastly, it's just Jeffrey and Varya. And they're still like with Varya's family and her mother, but they're leaving to go on some like to meet up with Jeffrey's friend who he already met in Mexico, who's from Russia. Um, so they have to say goodbye, and Varya and her mother are so sad to say bye to each other. And I, I think I don't even know if I ever mentioned this, but oh my gosh, Varya looks exactly like her mother. Like it's the exact same face. They have the same face. And they're so sad and they're just crying and hugging. I, what I found hilarious is that Varya mother never even said bye to Jeffrey. She really didn't. They was hugging and her and Varya were hugging. They hugged like 800 times and they were so sad and kissing. But she didn't say bye to Jeffrey. Jeffrey was like, bye. And she was like, and, and shut the door. She didn't care because she don't like him. Uh, and they go hang out with the friend. The friend is like, how do you feel about him? And she's like, I'm just still not sure. Varya's still not sure. And he's like, he's a great person. He really is. He's a nice guy. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so she's still on the fence about being with him because of him being a drug dealer previously. And she's just like, I don't know. I really don't know about you, Jeffrey. And we'll see because your drug dealing ways gonna mess up my bright future in America. That is what she's talking about. But that's really it. That's what happens with them. So... And I really don't have no no commentary on Jeffrey Vary. I don't want Vary to be with Jeffrey. I hope she leave him. Cause we already know he abuses. So I really do hope she leave him. Um and just find another man to go to America. 
you know, whatever. So that is it for my recap and review of 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, the pop up and pop out episode. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye.